in this situation, we avoided in, in many places catastrophes. Governments are racing to get vaccines to as many Canadians as possible during the worst wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. But during these times of uncertainty, we can turn to communities across the country that serve as a beacon of hope, drastically reducing the number of COVID-19 infections in what experts are calling a success story and a marker for the rest of Canada. A lot of Indigenous communities had very high rates of uh, of uh, COVID and severe disease. Over 4,800 active cases reported in First Nations communities during the week of January 10th. Last week, there were 739. In between those months, over 233,000 vaccines administered in First Nations communities. As the vaccinations came in, you've seen that drastic drop in, in admissions to the hospital and severe um, uh, COVID cases and deaths. And so the vaccination has made a huge difference in, in the numbers. Dr. Lisa Richardson took a number of flights to northern communities vaccinating hundreds of Indigenous people. She says 90% of the adults who could get the shot received it. She says there were 72 reported cases on reserves last week, noting that the vaccine rollout has been successful. It's a story of hope, and it's a story of hope here in communities where we don't usually look to for guidance and hope. And I really want us to, to kind of reverse the way we think about our peoples. To get vaccines to remote areas, Dr. Richardson says partnerships were formed, including with Orange Air Ambulance. Communities know what communities need. The voices guiding the rollout, Indigenous leaders, organizations and community members who created environments of trust aiming to reach as many people as possible. And that's led to incredible results. Although, you know, many of us were there as vaccinators or as healthcare leaders bringing our expertise from medicine and health, really I would say the expertise was on the ground from those leaders who knew their community members. Advocates push for Indigenous peoples to be identified as a priority group. Risk factors have left this group vulnerable during other pandemics. When H1N1 occurred, we know that Indigenous communities had a higher percentage of people ending up in the ICU. Prior to the rollouts, there were concerns of vaccine hesitancy among groups that historically experienced racism and mistreatment in health care. But that wasn't the case here. I actually didn't encounter hesitancy. I encountered gratitude. Um, it was, I think this, when we look at the conversation around hesitancy, we need to reframe it completely. We need to understand what the barriers were. Dr. Richardson calls this a transformative experience. She says her and her team were welcomed in by the communities who at the end thanked them with a ceremony and gifts, including moccasins. You can learn more about this story on our website, citynews.ca. For City News, I'm Faisal Amin.